and safety are very important in the workplace, but often get overlooked. In today's episode, we focus on two wonderful women who are making sure that employers account for the health and safety of their employees. We start with Rifilo Seboto, the founder of PBM Creations. Her company supplies premium personal protective clothing to major mining and construction firms in South Africa. Still in Pretoria, we meet Busi Sileesho, founder of IST HSE Solutions. She talks to us about challenges of growing up without parents and how she left the IT sector to pursue business in the industry she knew very little about. South Africa is marred with challenges of solving employee health, safety, and wellness. There is a need to address and transform holistic support provided to employees to ensure risk management, occupational health, safety, and productivity. Why do I think about the health and safety industry? It's a very good sector in the country because what would uh, construction workers be without uh, safety gear? It helps to provide uh, workers with gear for like safety at work. I think they're doing a great job basically. There's not much that I can complain about. In South Africa, the iron and steel, construction, agriculture and food and drinks have been identified as sectors with the highest risks when it comes to health and safety in the workplace, making 47% of workplace injuries and death. There's usually the, the common one, Amakarapa, and um, putting on boots are uh, mostly used by construction workers. Things like uh, reflectors, bulletproof vests. So those are the things that I know that I use in the industry. Safety gears that I know are, that I know of are gloves, the boots, the overalls that you see the construction workers wearing. From a small rural mining town of Merikana, Namkanya Subeslana no Soma Pizni so wenza um seven zong omega kakun, e kamala ku refuel on patu and company bizong two I PBM creations. We are bonaga lono west mam. Wabonaga gutiga ikona ike pula konagi enagi anga ta isagi is into eze figela, footyas in agela ba sevens, and dawen lapo be sevens akon. Nam tanje, sis of estilego nagi lum kak. My name is Refilwe Sibotoma. I am the founder and managing director of Buso Busa Muso, trading as PBM Creations. We specialize in a full range of personal protective clothing, corporate clothing, and corporate gifting. So my businesses so best get out so good now. I'm trying to business like a listen. They love a pitol. Love a corner. Get born again. Party party. Is a footy band. They is in part as well. Figure love a seven. And down love for seven. Zakon. The Kamalin company is on go to a PBM Creations. Born again. Party band. They go safety way for a seven. We in country is a two a two again. I guess fun the government get business lab. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm happy, lah. Little naggy thing. Ah, galaxies, galaxies. So when we're cooling, we go to you. We're allowed to skip so boring. Allow us to enjoy the fun. Thank you guys for coming. We appreciate it. Yeah, we're warm. Eh, can you manage? Can't pay me to stop the cooling. It's a business. We're going to Zagalan. I guess we're going to stop the cooling. We're going to stop the cooling. I'm thinking about how to mine. You know, safety. I mean, safety is key in, mm. in mining environment. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what targets we achieve. Mm -hmm. If safety is not guaranteed, then. So I started having an interest of why the safety, yeah. why is safety so critical, you know? So I then did full industry analysis mm. and studies. I studied a little bit of occupational health and safety, mm. which is the act which is actually addressing PPE at work. Mm -hmm then that's where this whole concept comes from. Yeah. And I also realized that there's a very few black young players mm. in the industry. Guys, what we want to do capital in business, especially capital again to cool. And for Luna, to start your business, capital that you used, yeah. 
It's like really guy that kept so and what did you use for it? Because it was actually ten atom. Okay, um, so the first portion of, of the capital, it came from my monies when I resigned from the mine. Mm. You know, um, we used the money to settle some of the debts, yes. you know, so that we are just more liberated yes. as, as far as that is concerned. We started looking for government bodies, you know, like your CEDA, yeah. who, who were able to help us study uh, um, marketing materials, the financial systems that we are using, we got it from them. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we are in the process of getting ISO 9000 certification. Mm -hmm. You know, CEDA also assisted with those kind of things. Yeah. So, like I, I'm a, I'm a services no man. I think you want to business like. We do, you know, your head protection, yeah. we do your body protection, yeah. you know, we do your foot protection. We also have safety accessories. So we do eyewear, we do earplugs, we do earmuffs, you know, oh. we do a full range of uh, personal protective clothing. This is where the magic happens. No. We do a full customization um, in here. Yeah. So I will just hand you over to Swongile. Mm -hmm. She's our production supervisor. Yeah. So I'll leave it to her because I'll probably end up yeah, pinching myself. So it's a reflective tape on. Okay. But yeah. first we need to mark where the reflective tape must be. Okay. So we use different sizes. This is for the arms uh -huh. and this is for the legs. Okay. I handle the finance department and the HR department as well. PBM is well, it's owned by Orifilwe, and she's a young, ambitious woman, of which she's committed. And you know, as a young um, lady as well, you, you have goals. And being close with people who would see, you can see where they're going, and they're going the direction that you want to go. That's one of the things that attracted me to PBM. to focus on very high quality products yeah. you know we we obviously then start attracting such big clients these are clients who understand how critical safety is at a workplace you know so if there's any way where they're gonna cut budget it cannot be in safety you know it's uh, when you're looking at some other suppliers and guys You'll find that maybe when you need something, let's say you need something different, they'll try to restrict you to whatever they can offer, you know. Uh, with PBM, uh, we went so far to the point that if this thing doesn't work, we need to try something else. And then what I like about them, they, they, they do listen, you know. I mean, it will be like, you know what, I need this. Try this, but I'll tell them, no, 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 this doesn't work for me. I need this. What they do, they'll go as far as together. And then that's, that, that, that's what keeps the relationship and the communication and everything. You are in a new environment, you know, there's just a lot of boys around you and they feel like you're the prettiest girl in town. <laughs> Now we take a journey to our hometown in Marikana and Northwest. La Pokona is a total son and um, they know I can foot in a bang and bag. Bonagela Bantuas, Chella Gabans in Gemvela Piao Gelentogas. Nal Utabaloak. I think she was 17. When, when we came here to stay in Lekoko, you know, she's elderly and she has that extra love. And my mom was just rough. I mean, my mom was rough. If, if you get home and thing and 
you would get it, you know, and now all of a sudden we are here and there's this liberty to do anything that you want to do and you get so excited about things and you are in a new environment, you know, and it's a bit faster than where you come from and there's just a lot of boys around you and they feel like you're the prettiest girl in town. <laughs> I wanted to change the status quo, you know, to say I've messed up, but we're cleaning up and we're moving forward now. For Fifi to be a parent is what made her to be the Walenka thing today. I remember we spent a lot of time looking at the time because my mom was at work, you know, and yeah, I think because my grandmother was that old as well, then you start getting that freedom where you can now start dodging and running around and doing things that you're not supposed to be doing. I was in 2011 to fast track things, and then we got married in 2012, December. We met, we loved each other, we were crazy about each other. It really just happened so fast. I was in the hospital, and I was in She's very supportive, she's very dedicated. And then as a mara, she's a very good mara, Kobane Marona. Kirakatla High School, I did my grade 11 and I did my grade 12 here. I think one of the things is that my teachers were so strict. I mean, I would get 98% and instead of celebrate I'll be asked for the other 2% where it went to. We spend most of our time at when we're home, but we talk about business, we, we strategize, we plan about the next move and so forth. I'm very persistent. I'm extremely persistent. Lack of safety and wellness programs in the workplace is still a major concern. Uri filo njenga manjo sa studio setu lapo kwena gano juwano ntlebe no pips. Lapo kwena ge bakulu manga ma challenges ana woge business in lake. Futi, papinde ge bakwa ninge na ma milestones ase wa achivile ge ena ge business in lake. I'm very nervous about today, but at the same time I'm extremely excited. I'm looking forward to, to learning a lot from, from the coach and the mentors and Pepsi himself and I'm really looking forward to the next level of PBM creations. Refueler's business was born out of a need to address the challenges of safety and wellness in workplaces. She found her niche market in the manufacturing and construction center where she supplies safety gear. She's here to discuss her opportunities as well as the strategies that she's going to use to attract more clients. Refueler, welcome to my house. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic. Thank Take you. Seat. So, tell me a little bit more about your business. Um, you supply safety gear. Yes. So, are you a buyer and seller? Is that really what you do? What we have done is that we did a full industry needs mm -hmm. analysis, and the approach was really to identify what is it that the industry has not captured right? So we did um, surveys with clientele just to find out what are the gaps in the industry. So because of that, we really try to be a one-stop shop and to bring that approach into the business. So we would source from the manufacturers, then we will do what we call full customization in-house. So if a client needs an extra button to meet their own 
in-house safety requirements, we will do that for them. If they need reflective tapes, we will do that for them. If they need branding, so all those things that they do not come as standard on, on safety garments, then we do that just to be able to assist the clients to meet their, their needs. Okay, and is the plan for the future, because you've got a good thing going, is the plan for the future to start manufacturing your own stuff? Yes, absolutely. Why? I, um, I think really the, the first two years of the business was to, to lend the industry because, I mean, I'm relatively quite new in the industry. So it was really to lend the industry in and out, you know, the big players, how does the industry operate. But the 2020 plan is really to start going into manufacturing because we want to start moving towards owning some part of the value chain, you know, so that we are able to then control the in-house processes more. Because when you are mostly dependent on the outside forces, everything that they don't do then reflects on the business, you know. So if we say our turnaround time is key to us, you know, it means if a supplier is not delivering in time, we are then unable to, to, to meet that. Okay, is that, yeah. is that quite a big challenge in the business at the moment or generally? in terms of suppliers not delivering on time or you know that kind of thing or not delivering at the right quality do you have those challenges sometimes it does it does happen especially considering that we've got bigger players in the industry the people who have been in the industry for just over 30 30 years you know so obviously they've got priorities you know so if we had to both place an order. The chances are they would be first on the priority line, then we would become then second or third. Okay. Yes. And who are some of your competitors in this space? So we're looking at your AJ safety, we look, we're looking at protector safety, you know, um, we're looking at your Johnson workwear. So do so. you, um, Johnson workwear, I know that one, they're yes. quite big. Yes. But they, do they manufacture themselves or do they also just well, not just, actually, because customization is very important. Yes. Do they customize uh, or do they manufacture or a combination of both? Okay, so most of the guys that I've mentioned, your Protect and AJ Safety, they also source from other manufacturers. And the tricky part is that they don't do in-house customization. So they need to get someone else to come and do the customization. And that's where we are really trying to, to close the gap. I saw your numbers. You're not doing badly. I mean, it's, it's, you're doing great. Um, I think the business obviously has a lot of scope for growth.
it, I mean, it's very emotional. It's your business. You started it from scratch. And some of these people are the people that you started with them, you know. And sometimes it does become very difficult to be able to come and say, you know, I can no longer have you or, you know, we're not in agreement anymore. It, it, it does have that, that impact because these are the people that you've worked with them for years and some of them you feel like you at least owe that to them, that they started the vision with you and you kind of owe it to them to, to keep them and to stick around with them. Absolutely. What would happen if the actions of those people carried on for another two years or for another four years unremedied? and without recourse. Yeah. What would happen? Would they still have that place to wake up and go to work mm -hmm. for? Would they still have that constant income? Would they still have the business that you call your own? On the flip side, if you do have those difficult conversations and put in those stringent processes, what they would have is a business that's profitable, a yeah. business that's able to provide them stable income, a business that will grow with the huge vision that you've set out for them to grow into. Thank you so much. I, I think I really needed that, you know, because you, from what I can really get from this session is that in trying to protect them and to love them, I'm actually not even doing them any, any good as well. Absolutely. Yeah. She just triggered that thing, you know, what needs to be done to get to that next level that I've been talking about. And I'm very excited. I'm very strong in implementing, so I can't wait to go back and implement what I've learned. When uh, my mother passed, she had gotten sick a lot before that, I think about three years. I didn't even go to a funeral. Ongumpatu and company as young Guti, IST, HSE, Lena get footy fund, the Sabant, Gok Figelega, Emmy Sebenzin. We are born again in company, Lena get it's a young Gumi Fula Gelapayan, Babo no good as any is in Gelas, good perfund, the Sabant, and the Logos Figelega Langapan. I guess he's old Tabalayo Gelencosas and a good business lucky, Lona get the Hambaranja. I'm Busi Silesho, I'm the MD of IST HSC Solutions. We help businesses with safety compliance through trainings that are accredited with CETA in first aid firefighting and machinery training. We also help with site inspections and auditing. Bubon and La Payamva, one we are such Enzo, Futia Conagama construction and Manning Enza Galai, Cotto sales with Tuna and Kunta Len, his safety and awareness, as near as in Toga, as in Kora Kulukuba Sabins. Always my men's of Enkita Usugunai, Vienna get business like Elisabeth Zagona Lumkakalo, Jem go back a footy by train a couple of sevens, wing companies at two after when Utiba was in safety, Nanga wellness. Joseph spend our Sugunai, Sifuna was good in company, it train our one, footy woman, a beba trainer, Baba trainer Ganja, Sala of Silicon, Agas Bangin, his Pretoria East. Hi, sir. Nice space. Yes. <laughs> No, it's very, very easy. Because you can see Nala, Sine, fresh air yeah. and nature, and then upstairs, it's like yeah. But we were very, very uh, fortunate to have this space because it's, it's very calm, it's inviting, yeah. and we, it, it's easy to work at. Yes, Guti, you tell me that you have a lot of sales, you have a lot of sales, you have a lot of sales, and you have a lot of sales, and you have a lot of sales, and you have a lot of sales. Yini nita wenzu tu sales imaga ngan na yinte ngfunungi na yone business yone yinte ngfungu iso ngoli. So I got a sales job, mm -hmm. and in my sales job, that is where actually I found this business because I was just going about doing my work, mm -hmm. daily work, and I met someone that I was in a, a, a manufacturing environment, but this uh, a middle aged uh, a, a, a gentleman mm -hmm. was definitely sick, almost yeah. sick to, 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 to die because he had skin cancer. He, he, he really did not understand about safety in the workplace. Yeah. And when I spoke to them, I found out that 
the company did not know about safety. They so I thought if I could teach each and every person that works in a company mm -hmm. to know that safety is important for them, mm -hmm. then I would have done a whole lot of things. I would have helped the family, I would have helped the business. Mm -hmm. When you business, easy accreditation, So currently, the accreditation is about five seaters. So the accreditation takes some about two years. Yes. So because I have 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 I I'm a service owner provider like I. Kuna mandatory training that every company in Melbourne has. So if it's eight, umang abe se gwende gaguba ne accident. Ik ambulance takes about 30 minutes or maybe 15 to 30 minutes to get there. Mara, go the first 15 minutes. If lo muntu angaga be angaga na agwa, they might lose their life. So. Within the workplace, when we face eight, how to do CPR, how to stop the bleeding. Idira D sales. I'm part of operations. Like I oversee everything. When Busi goes to the meeting, he comes back and reports to me. When Maite does something, or Julia, I report to So I'm IST on my own. Finally, some days, like when I can't, like I just can't yeah. tolerate her. Yeah. But she's an easy person to work with. Um, up to date, like, oh, in a, in a way, she can relate to us. But what downgrade, like. So today's center is scaffolding training. Yes. So we scaffold that side, uh -huh. e inspection on scaffolding and yeah. erector scaffolding. Yeah. And then the ones are also if phase eight for the guys that are working on site. Uh -huh. <laughs> into a safety is a and then personal protective clothing and equipment they have a bond. but so the is the most tied. Oh, the mobile in Yes, yes. I need to at least chance of to sing a movie and I'm by band. And then the where some keeper up and there was a person with face eight. Namo IST, Merokwaka, Koho facilitator, and at the same time, Loho assessor during the trainings. The person is not breathing. First things first, you need to open the airway. How do you open the airway? By doing what you call a chin lift head tilt method. You tilt it back so that the air passage must be open. Immediately after doing that, what you do is you listen to the sound of the air coming out. Every story starts at home. Busi Silejo takes us on a journey of self-discovery, finding inner peace, and she opens up about her traumatic childhood experience. Nali Utabaloake. When uh, my mother passed, she had gotten sick a lot before that, I think about three years, and she wasn't staying at home, so I was staying with my aunt. So, and then that day, there's a man who came and then took to my aunt and was like, yeah, we found your sister, She's, she passed away, this and this. So I just ha overheard the conversation. Oh, it was a sad situation. Ah, and my aunt, I think she also didn't know how to tell me, so I just like went and cried the whole night. 
My aunt didn't know that I know now, so she was still keeping the story, you know. And then the next day my sisters came, yeah, I already know, then that's when they tell, they told me. So uh, that was sad, that was really sad. Nyaka banga kuthi kwamsita yena buso ukuthi kwenteke at his young age ngoba akuzange kum traumatize kangako I didn't even go to a funeral because the funeral was in Swaziland I didn't have a passport it wasn't just I did not get any closure on it I just had to continue you know like that's it move on I was born in 2001, August. I might be wrong, but I think it's 2001. I was born in Oshuk. And uh, since then, I moved to Pretoria in 2022. 20, oh, and I started school there. I was born in 2002. Here I go, but I'm not going to go to school. TUT. I was now go, but I'm not going to go to the Kihuji Harveshi. Then I got to go to the Wusi. Then from there, I got to go to the Wusi. We finished school around about 2004. We graduated, I think he graduated first and then I graduated. And then we looked for jobs. I was, yeah, and then I got a job and he got a job. So like, I think he got a job and three months later, he was like, I'm marrying you. I'm like, what? 2007, Kirikinyala Wusi, Ibama Kutuwaka, Kaotlala. She's a wonderful mother and a wonderful businesswoman. Well, she's actually my role model. Oh, wow, well, Mother Wood. Oh, that's not my strongest point. I know it's not. <laughs> she loves working. The kids love her. Though being an entrepreneur, you know the challenges. You want to spend more time, but sometimes it's difficult. Having a husband like him, I mean, he takes care of everything. He knows when the kids don't have pampas. He knows when we don't have groceries. He buys the groceries. I mean, he, he takes care of everything else. My support keep her motivated. The kids, family, she, they, they keep her motivated. At first, when I saw her, she was loud. Yes. <laughs> she laughed a lot, and it irritated me at first. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we go out on Friday nights sometimes. She likes going out. We like also hiking. Hiking makes it so easy. We go slow, we chat, we talk about everything that we need to talk about the whole day, and it's a whole day. <laughs> Life so, is easier when you don't eat meat. Like Hi, Ibo. There's nothing like that. Mm, I love my protein. I think her strengths are that she always takes, she's willing to take up on any challenge, you know, she's fearless, I can say that. I mean, she's always trying to explore new things and she has that adrenaline for life and always wanting to go beyond everything else, yeah. So I think that's her strength. She likes to dream big, that's one thing. She likes to dream big, she likes to set goals and she always makes sure she achieves them. What's the biggest mistake you think you've made in, in, in business so far? I hiring wrong. Some people lie very good. Others lie better than others. Obusi has found a unique business model. You na gele nem siza yogut ana ge gele ma business amaning langa pal. Jenga man jose studio se tu gele po kona no juan on tebe no peeps. Jobe zoto pusa ngogo tizi pige zin gele anazo ezom siza yogut anjo anjo bali se business lag. I'm at the Making Moves Studios. I am going to have an interview with Pepsi. I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to the coaching. It is really exciting. Busi is a qualified information technology specialist by profession. However, she took a leap of faith and ventured into unknown territory where she started her business in safety and wellness. Today, she sits down with me to unpack her business needs, vision and challenges. Also, Busi, welcome to Making Moves. Don't be so shy. Come, 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 sit down. <laughs> How are you? 
Hi, Percy. How are you doing? I'm great. Sharp, sharp. So, the safety and wellness story, just explain it to me and explain the different aspects of your business. So our business, in summary, we help businesses to change lives and save lives in the workplace. The experience, you went from working to, from, for somebody else, you saw this need, you created a solution for it. What has the experience been going from employee to business owner? I say it, it's been two part. There's been the very exciting thing of being able to help out. I think what I do, I could literally do it without being paid. Well, with that said, being paid is very important. So that was the biggest thing, getting to actually run the business because providing the service, that was just in my heart. I, I just knew that I could do that. But actually setting up an actual business that actually runs like a business was actually a very, very uh, challenging thing to do. Okay. And when, at which time, just give me one scenario where you thought, ah, I've made the wrong decision here. I'm in the wrong business or I should have never gone out in business. And how did you overcome that moment of doubt? I think I, I, I'll say I'm lucky I haven't had a, a point where I, I'll think of going back. But um, I think one thing that I did decide was to say, if this doesn't work, I'm prepared to sleep under a bridge. So that hasn't happened and um, I'm hoping it never happens. Mm. But the, the, the skills of running a business have come in, uh, well, they sort of just, you have to have them. You can't run from that. So getting them, it, it's not that easy or even uh, exciting, you know. So what are you doing to upskill yourself and build those skills that you require in order to run your business? So it's a lot of learning. So I'm, I'm almost every other month in an entrepreneur course. I've studied in Gibbs for a year in an entrepreneur's course. I've, I just have to keep going for that finance course, going for that admin course, going for that business management course to make sure that um, I understand what business is. And what's the biggest mistake you think you've made in, in, in business so far? I think the biggest mistake will hi hiring wrong or hiring because you have to hire today, not doing your research properly of who do you need to hire, why do you need to hire them, what are their characteristics, what is their personality, is, is this person the right person for the job. So I just hire someone because I'm a fun person, I love fun, and I would hire a fun person and then both of us will be having fun in the office and no work done. <laughs> so obviously, and yeah. then I'm, you know, I'll then hire a serious person for a fun, part of the business and then it'll be just wrong also. So for me, hiring, hiring has been a real um, a, a challenge because I really love people and I always want to see um, people um, evolve. So when I'm hiring someone, I'm not just hiring them, you know, to have a job. I, I'm hiring because I want to see them grow. And, and well, if someone is not into that, then I really do get hurt also, you know, so. So uh, how, how are you now hiring better? What have you put in place in order to enable you to hire better? Yeah, I've learned a lot about hiring. So now we have a, a specific process from looking at the actual responsibility function of the of the post. So we have to thoroughly analyze the post to a certain level where we know for sure we need a person who's going to be fun, we need a person who's going to be strict, we need a person who likes to be in the office at six o'clock in the morning. So analyzing that and attaching it to a certain profile of a person. So by the time we start the interviews, we already know the profile of a person. So it, there might be a great person that comes in with all the knowledge, with all the qualification, but if it's not that profile, we have to say no and hire the right person. Other than bad hiring, which is a mistake we all make. I don't know how many times I've hired the wrong people. Um, what other challenges have you got in the business now? I think, well, now that is the, the biggest because we are currently expanding and expanding needs a whole lot of people. So at the moment, that is the current challenge. And obviously the challenge of getting new clients, the, the top that we want now, the growth that we want now is going to come from them. Um, thank you very much for spending time with us. I'm going to hand you over to a friend of mine, Lucas Moloy and you're gonna have a coaching session and I hope that works out well for you.
Thank you. Okay, and I wish you the very best. I think you're doing so many of the right things in your business, and I think you're going to have phenomenal growth. Thanks. We've just unpacked some of Busi's business challenges that need to be addressed in order for her to maximize her business output. I'm sending her to a coaching session with one of our esteemed in-house coaches, Mr. Lucas Muloy, to help her explore ways to grow her business. I've just had a great interview with Pepsi. I've talked a lot about my business, which has just made me think of other things that I've, I've been thought of. And I'm going to the coaching session with the coach so I'm really, really, really looking forward to some great advice from him. Um, where is the focus largely when, when, when we're looking in the sector? We folk, our current clients were, or are health and health and safety in the construction industry, okay. manuf manufacturing industry, and corporate. So our focus now, we want to shift it into the mining industry. In the mining industry, okay. So what, what I got around was that uh, the, the, it's largely SMMEs that we, are, that we are focusing on. Yes, that is the market that we have um, been operating yes, in in that year. Yes. Um, how, how has the reception been in that market? It's been great because absolutely um, any construction company that's just up starting up, yeah. they have no idea what health and safety is. Mm. And there is a whole lot of money that they lose because they don't have health and safety. Um, you remember... A couple of years, the big weight became behavior-based safety. Mm -hmm. um, I still feel that th there is still room for behavioral-based safety. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was perhaps implemented, but did not achieve um, what it was meant for it. Now, that is, that is a point where you need to start, to start looking. When we talk about uh, a safety training, is it training that changes the behavior? Now, you, if you can also do a little bit of study and write up around that, so that when you go to organizations, you can show them how have the training that you're providing, how has it changed behavior? Now, if you can look a little bit on that, um, that is going to be able to allow you access into, into the spaces. Um, but one of the issues that is pressing that you, you touched on was the issue of um, employing the right people. Mm -hmm. I just want to say to you, do understand, there is no formula in employing the right people. Mm -hmm. It is going to be, some people lie very good. Others lie better than others. Mm -hmm. So in an interview and that you are not going to be able to get what you want. Through experience, you're going to get the ones that have learned all the wrong things. So it, it's a game where you are going to always have to test and try. What you need to focus on is that, is the person suited to the culture of the organization? Because mm -hmm. cultural, a match is the most important thing in the business. If the person doesn't suit into the culture of the business, you are going to pick up a lot of problems. The second one is the shared vision. Make sure that the people that come into your business share the same vision for the industry as you do, have got the same passion for the intra industry as what the organization has. That way, you don't always constantly need to motivate people because they are motivated already in with what uh, the industry is about. Uh, you know, don't, don't worry too much about, about education and that. Mm. Worry more about skills. You know, people, people, there are things that people cannot learn from school, and, and those things they will, they, they will need are the, are the things that make them better employees in the, in the organization. Mm. Um, we are going to have to leave it there today. I don't know if uh, there's any pressing issue that you'd want to touch on quickly. No, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. I, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. I, I, I'm definitely going to put uh, plans together and make sure that we, we follow up on how we are going to be providing the systems in a more yeah. Um, creative way. Yeah, I, I really wish you all the luck in that and, uh, and, and hoping to see you around the circles soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. 
it was very useful advice. We are already thinking in the same line of thought, so it has helped me a lot to um, analyze what we need to do. And it's definitely something that we're going to use.